Hi, I'm Lillian and welcome back to my channel. Uh, so this video is kind of inspired by me and my sister spending an afternoon comparing our bookshelves and comparing like the oldest books we had and the longest and the shortest and the stuff like that. So I thought it would be mm, potentially interesting to do a like bookshelf superlatives video. Um, so I made myself a list of categories and I found all the books that match them and I'm just going to go through them today. So to make it more interesting, mostly for me, I don't know about you guys, um, I have a little mug thing I brought off my sister, it's got Moomin on, I put all the categories in here. I mainly did this because I really like the aesthetic and the idea of having a TBR jar, but like it's something I know I could never have myself, I just would never use it, would never read the books in it, it would kind of just be a waste of time, but I really like the idea of it. So I'm going to be pulling uh, categories from here and go along with them. So number one. Okay, most recent purchase. So the last books I got were actually in April and I actually got four at the same time. I've read two of them, so I'm gonna show you the two I have not read. And they are The Bear and the Nightingale by Catherine Arden and Sissy by Jacob Tobia, or T Tobia, I'm not quite sure how to pronounce the best surname. Um, I got these in April, I haven't read either of them yet. But I've heard really good things about both of them and I follow them on Instagram and I just think they're hilarious and like really interesting. And this is kind of like a memoir, it says a coming of gender story and it just sounds really good. I'm really annoyed I haven't got around to those yet. Second category is, ah, what colour like book spines is the most common on my shelves? The answer to this is actually um, black book spines, like you can see a couple of them behind me. I think I have something like uh, I think it was 60 something when I counted. Yeah, 60 something uh, black book spines. And I think my like second most popular ones were blue and white. Okay, next one is longest book. This one, I think people might argue whether it's a book or not. I mean, it's not a novel, but it is a book. It's this massive German dictionary I have. This like is so heavy. So this one I've had, I think since my first year of university, it's actually my dad that bought it for me. Um, he rang me and was like, oh no, I found a, a, a German dictionary in a shop. It's quite big, understatement of the century. Do you want me to get it for you? It's like a couple of quid. And I was like, oh, I don't know. I already have a German dictionary, um, which for comparison sake is about like a quarter of the size, probably less. Um, and I was like, oh, I don't know. And I was umming and ahhing. And then he sent me a photo and I was like, yes, please buy that for me. It's huge. And I think it was like five pounds. Okay, back to the topic at hand. This has 2,108 pages. So, by far, <laughs> is the longest book on my shelves. And in case you think that's a cop out because it's it's not technically a book, whatever. Um, I found my second longest book, which is definitely a novel. It is the German edition of um, Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix, the fifth book. This one comes in at 1,000 and 21 pages so very long even though it's literally like half the size of the next book up next one is heaviest book okay i guess i timed that one perfectly because the answer is again the massive german dictionary i did weigh it for this video and it was like 2080 grams so almost three kilograms no i don't know what that is in pounds and stone whatever okay next one earliest published book okay this one is also quite easy for me because there's really there's basically only one contender um and it is the odyssey by homer this was published in i want to say the eighth yeah the eighth century bc so it's like almost three thousand years ago by far <laughs> the oldest book on my shelves i have another sort of um ancient greek roman book i have the aeneid by virgil but this was published like literally a thousand years later. Though it is a bit weird to say that, like, that's nothing. <laughs> that's hardly any time. Oh, only a thousand years later. Okay, next one we're gonna do is longest series, aka most books. Okay, this one, I kind of got two answers for this. Um, the actual answer is the Tintin uh, series. I have 10 Tintin books, but they're not it's not like the complete series, because I think there's like 20 something, and they're not really like in order. So even though I don't have the complete series, or even though actually the correct order of the books in this series, it is the series I own the most books from, as in one of each. If it was like the series I own the most books of, it would be Harry Potter, because I have like multiple editions of all the books. But as in like one copy per book, per series, it would be Tintin. 
And if we were being picky and saying, oh, that doesn't count because it's not a full series, not an order, the answer would be the Lady Grace mysteries. I have uh, the first eight. I thought there were only eight because I stopped reading after the eighth one, but I think actually there were 12. Um, but they're kind of like kids' books, so I'm not super interested in going back and reading the ninth through 12th book. Um, so this is kind of also an answer because this would be an eight book series, but I actually own <laughs> books one through eight in the right order and I've read them all. Okay, next one. I feel like we're going through these quite quickly. It is the most popular book on Goodreads. Okay, this will probably come as no surprise because I've already mentioned the Harry Potter series. It is the first Harry Potter book, Philosopher's Stone. This has something like, oh, I did look this up. Uh, I want to say 6.7 million ratings on Goodreads. Um, so that's a lot. And because I thought Harry Potter might be a bit of a like cop-out answer, like it's kind of obviously going to be the most popular book that I own, um, I wanted to see what the second most popular one was. To be honest, like a lot of the top 10 are all seven books in the Harry Potter series, but number two is actually a 1984 by George Orwell. This doesn't really surprise me because it is like a modern classic. It's one of the few classics and modern classics I've read and own. I think things like Great Gatsby and Kill a Mockingbird will probably be more popular but I don't own those and I mean to be honest probably never will I'm not just not a huge fan of of classics even modern ones okay next one we're gonna do is least popular on Goodreads oh I didn't even plan that perfectly timed so this book the least popular is The Magic Lands by is it by Kevin Crossley Holland I am the only person on Goodreads as of filming this video to have ever like read and rated this. I think it gave it three or four stars. Um, so that is its its rating on Goodreads actually because I'm literally the only person to have given it a star rating. But to be honest, I like this book. It's like a collection of folk stories, um, of like British traditional folk stories. And I really liked it. I thought it was really interesting. I was genuinely surprised that literally no one else seems to have read it <laughs> on the entirety of Goodreads. Okay, another Goodreads one. Lowest average rating on Goodreads. This was another surprise because I remember, like, I didn't hate this book, thought it was okay, um, but it's Shadow Mancer by G.P. Taylor. I vaguely remember this being about, I want to say, like, an evil vicar, um, and I think there was angels or the son of an angel. I, I don't really remember, but I remember thinking it was fine, and, like, I have another one of his books um, there behind me, and I read both of them, and I was like, they're fine. I liked them. Um, but this has a rating of 2.83 on Goodreads, and basically on Goodreads anything below like three and a half stars is considered a not very good rating, and anything below three is like, wow, that's a terrible rating. So I, I genuinely don't understand how this book is so hated, I guess. <laughs> okay. Most popular genre on my shelves. Okay, I did a like bookshelf breakdown and I counted exactly how many books I had in each genre. The answer did not surprise me, it was fantasy. Um, I have, I think, 103 fantasy books on my shelves and I own like, I, I want to say just over 300 books physically, so that's about a third <laughs> of everything. That really doesn't surprise me. Fantasy and sci-fi are my favourite genres and sci-fi was like the number two most popular. Latest published book. So I don't own that many like new releases. I'm very bad at keeping up to the hype and buying things immediately when they come out. So actually the latest published book I own is the fourth volume of the Monstrous Graphic Novel series by Marjorie Liu and San Takeda. This came out in late 2019. I think it was October it came out. So that's like, well, I'm filming this in June 2020. So that's like nine months ago. Um, so compared to people who have like arcs of books that haven't even been released yet, that's quite a, uh, an old new book to have. But to be honest, I think I kind of prefer it that way, like not owning too many new releases because I think I'd feel really pressured to read them and then because of that pressure would put off reading them and then if I did keep on getting new releases, I would just like grow a massive physical TBR and never read them. So this is kind of working for me as in coming to books a few years after they've been out and be getting to cherry pick the ones I'm actually interested in. Ugliest book cover. Okay, I realise this is a very subjective decision. Um, and to be honest, I have quite a lot of books which people would consider ugly. Um, but I have chosen as a winner 
this unfortunate copy of Fire Wing by Kenneth Oppel. This is a series about bats. Um, it sounds weirder than it is, I actually quite liked it. And he is the author of one of my favourite books of all time, Skybreaker. The, the, uh, the cover is... I think it's like literally a, a demon bat, I think, from the story. Don't ask, this book is set in the bat underworld. Um, and I just think it's really ugly. I think normally I dislike books which have like photos on the cover um, of like real people. I tend to dislike those more than like illustrated covers and that kind of thing. But I, I just, I just think it's very ugly. I'm sorry Mr. Bat, I can't remember your name, but you are ugly. Okay, shortest book. This one is this retelling of the Iliad and the Odyssey. Who's it by? Marcia Williams. I know a lot about Greek mythology and English folklore and Shakespeare and Charles Dickens because as a kid I had all the Marcia Williams like retellings of the stories, like shortened versions, and they all got these amazing illustrations, which I was like really obsessed with. Um, and it was, you know, educational and fun, but this is the shortest book I own. I think it has 30, 38 pages. There we go. Okay, we've still got a couple more categories. This one is oldest book, so not, not the book which was published the earliest, otherwise that would be the Odyssey, but like the physical, physically, what am I saying? Like the oldest physical edition of a book. So for me this is my copy of Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. This is like such an old one. Um, this was published in 1942. So that's like 80 years ago and officially makes it the oldest book. I thought it was going to be uh, the copy of The Lord of the Rings I have. That was published in 1975 and I thought that would like definitely be the oldest book I had. And I was like, wait, I have that really old copy of Rebecca. Best book cover. Again, this is subjective and I have so many books I would consider beautiful. Uh, if you ask me this question tomorrow, I would probably pick a different book to be honest. But for now, I have gone with The Bone Clocks by David Mitchell. I love this cover. I like the colours, I like the design, the illustration. I love all the little details. I tend to go for more like detailed illustrations than like simple graphic ones. It's just my personal preference. But I think this is absolutely gorgeous. The book itself is great. And yeah, it's much nicer than the uh, ugly bat cover. Okay. Next we have book I've owned the longest. This is the same answer, it is this specific edition of Philosopher's Stone. This was the original one my family read to me when I was like, what, four or five? Um, it's really battered and bruised. Just a couple of pages in, you can see it's been like mended with washi tape. I don't know who did this, it wasn't me, um, but that's quite funny. It's a little bit water damaged from years of being read in the bath probably um, but none of the pages are missing just yet and this will always be like the original book that sparked my love of reading even though the author is uh, desperately trying to undo all that love I have for the series. Okay second to last I've got book you've owned the longest without reading. I wasn't exactly sure which book that would be um so I kind of guessed and it's this non-fiction book called Through the Looking Glass um, by Guy Deutscher. I bought this I want to say like first year of university um it's like five years ago it's it's like a non-fiction book about language and linguistics I think because I have not actually read more than like the first 10 pages and because this is a non-fiction book I don't keep it on like my um designated TBR shelf I put all my non-fiction books together, whether they're read or unread. So I actually sometimes forget this exists, um, which isn't very good if I want to read it. But it's just how my bookshelves work, and I keep telling myself one day, one day I'll pick it up um, when I'm interested in going back to reading about language and linguistics again. So I'm going to keep it, even though I've already had it for five years and haven't read it yet. I'm going to keep it and just wait for the mood to take me to actually pick it up. And the last one, I already know what this is, it's the highest average rating on Goodreads. Uh, this one, I'm part of the problem because I gave this book five stars. Um, I probably would not on reread. Uh, but somehow, beating out all of the Harry Potter books, every other book I own, it's Akamath by Sarah J Mass, 
is the highest rated book on Goodreads that I own on my bookshelves. This one has a rating of 4.65, which is ridiculously high. I know why it has that high rating. It's a very popular book series. Most people who read it really like it. And this one is like generally accepted to be by far the best book in the series. This is the, the middle book. Uh, I agree with that. It's a lot better than the first one and a lot, lot, lot better than the third and final book. I guess that's just how the world works currently. Um, hopefully something will come and knock this off its perch and give us a new, new answer for that question. So yeah, those were my bookshelf superlatives. Hope you found that kind of interesting. Maybe. Anyways, uh, thanks for watching and I hope you have a great week. Bye.